So, it's that time again. Getting ready for a new destination. Not gonna, not gonna tell you guys what it is yet, but definitely excited and it's in a different hemisphere. So, should be cool. <laughs> it's getting some packing ready. Well, getting some packing done, hopefully. You see all this stuff right now, it is laid out on the bed. This is usually what I travel with. So I just have like a carry-on luggage and then my backpack, which, you know, has my laptop and all the electronics and things like that. So all of this stuff should fit in here. And also some, some clothes hanging. So it fits a surprising amount of stuff. Um, and it, I also do like a 365 bag. It's not just like summer clothes. I actually have things for winter as well so basically like I can go down to about zero degrees Celsius with all this stuff but if it goes too far below freezing then it's gonna get a little uncomfortable got some uh, antibacterial wipes for the flight this is the <laughs> this is the Sony rig uh, I actually got a new tripod for this so we'll see how it works out I know he's canceling headphones, which is like super, super important for flights. Well, that's just the case and anyways. <laughs> and I'm kind of an organizational nerd. So I have like, you know, things for clothes and, you know, just kind of separate everything out. And I actually got a new Manal carry-on this year while I was back in the States. And this is a 3.0. I really like this. My last one served me for about seven years, so hopefully this one uh, <laughs> will do well too. Um, I actually really like the straps on this. Um, they did a really, really good job with the harness system, and it's super comfortable compared to the last one. It's a good bag. Um, I also order the Manal daily. It's uh, I have to go pick it up, actually. So from Mexico City... I'm going to go back to Southern California for a bit, say hi to my parents, um, run some errands real quick, get a test, <laughs> I'm on the plane, and then off to the next destination. I got my shoes here, my laptop <laughs> toolkit, so I can actually open it up um, and like clean it and stuff and there's a bug actually with the uh, Dell XPS 15 that if it gets too hot it'll actually like neuter itself so then it like basically barely barely runs you got to go in there and unplug the battery but um, yeah this is my it, it's a pro beetle but it's basically like the uh, Taiwanese brand eminent I really like this thing it's like super light Works really well. It's got a decent amount of storage. You can throw all my stuff in there. These compression bags by Eagle Creek are actually pretty cool. Uh, so I, I basically take all my winter stuff, shove it in there, and then it compresses down. Uh, so basically like everything you see here with the exception of the electronics bag for the camera um, and the uh, headphone bag, including all these clothes, will actually fit in here. Yeah, I'll probably put a couple things in my bag in case they force me to check it, but more or less, that's a that's how we roll. So usually two pairs of shoes. I used to travel with 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 one, but uh, now I have just like an everyday shoe, and then this is kind of like a nicer shoe. But I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not. <laughs> and then a pair of uh, flip flops as as well. So there it is. This is kind of like a three six five packing okay, and go from zero to 40 degrees <laughs> little bit of everything um so this morning actually i uh, did the antigen test uh for the u.s so i can go back even though i'm a citizen i still have to so that was kind of like nerve-wracking too because we've been in mexico for a really really long time you know, like every spot has its own rules and um, I'm just I'm just glad it came back negative, especially now with cases kind of getting out of control worldwide. But so far, so good. And then I have to take another test for my next destination and then two more tests the first seven days. So there's going to be a lot of tests coming up in my future. So, yeah. And Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi. 
she's gonna head back to Taiwan and she has to do a 14 day quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you survive that. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, and she actually had to take a PCR test two days before because that's Taiwan's requirement and then take another test one day before the flight because that's the US's requirement because she's transitioning through so traveling right now is definitely um, as far as like booking and my experience so far uh, if there's any entry requirements um, it's gonna cost you a lot more and it's gonna be a headache so I ended up booking things that were refundable, so like flights and you know certain accommodations that were refundable, and usually those cost more, right? Because if you fly like the budget airlines, they're usually not, and they charge you to, you know, change the plane ticket, or if you need to cancel it, it's like impossible. You just lose the money. So, yeah, on my next leg, it's a long international flight, so I paid more, like almost thirty or forty percent more, to be able to change without fees and all this kind of stuff. So. Hopefully I won't need to change it. So <laughs> that's kind of the state of travel right now, man. It's like just very, very difficult <laughs> compared to before. You know, with the exception of Mexico, which really doesn't have like too many entry requirements, but also not a lot of tourists like in Mexico City. It's not like too crazy, right? Uh, but hopefully when I start going to traditionally more touristy destinations, you know, because of those entry requirements, they'll be, it'll be a different experience, right? So like, say now, you know, if you go see the Eiffel Tower, I'm sure there's less people than there usually is pre, pre you know, all this stuff. Well, anyways, I'm gonna continue packing. The flight is tomorrow. So I'll try to have like a last breakfast here in Roma in Mexico City. Then uh, I'm gonna hop on that flight and head back to California. So stay tuned for that. This will be uh, probably the last, yeah, the last lunch in Mexico for a while until of course I come, come back. Overall though, super great. Uh, at this local restaurant called Riviera. It's a Yucatan restaurant. So like where we were before in Playa del Carmen. <laughs> So I ordered a couple of things I didn't get a chance to get in Playa del Carmen, uh, namely the papazules. It's like a Mayan, I think it's like an ancient Mayan dish with like pumpkin seed sauce and then tortillas and like an egg inside of it. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to try it. And then this is like a Yucatan chili relleno with a chile ishkatik and some, some sauce and beans. And of course, the Conchinita Pabil for Anita. <laughs> it's her favorite, uh, which is like a slow roasted uh, pork in like a chote chili, and it's like marinated in a couple of other things. Uh, and uh, fried plantains, which are also her favorite. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty good spread. Pretty interesting. It's kind of uh, very neutral. I guess it kind of tastes like food from 2,000 years ago. The final conchinita pavil taco. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my topo chico sparkling water too. <laughs> it's the morning of my flight. All packed up. I'm gonna grab a quick breakfast. Then uh, after that, probably. Uh, off to the airport.
I just saw Anita off to her flight. She's going back to Taiwan and I'm gonna stay here for a bit and then on to a new destination. But uh, yeah, now I'm trying to find uh, the rental car. <laughs> I think I gotta get on one of these buses. I don't know, I've never really rented a car from LAX before, so yeah, should be interesting. I see a budget truck busting. No! <laughs> oh well. I missed the bus. I'm going to pick up the rental car and then I'm going to drive to uh, my Airbnb for the week. So it'll be a quick stop. And uh, I'll run some errands and, you know, get my booster. All that kind of stuff and i also bought a whole bunch of stuff too like to uh to restock so we'll get into that in a later video probably lax is like pretty much a ghost town right now i mean it's kind of crazy it's it's about as empty as it was when i flew here like last year when things are still kind of raging. Um, pro probably like a little bit more cars, but pretty much, yeah. It's interesting traveling now for sure.